All right, welcome back. <laughs> and then I just survived the MTV Video Music Awards. I've been released on my own recognizance, and I'm out. I did my first VMAs 25 years ago, did the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones on the roof of Radio City. They, um, it was kind of tight for a ska band <laughs> doing the rocking out thing, and inside the main room was the, um, was the, uh, the Spice Girls, you know? You had Sporty Spice, you had Funk Spice, you had Old Spice, they all spiced up the place, and that's what the VMAs all are about. I've done them many times over the years. I've got many stories of the VMAs. Some I can't tell you, <laughs> you know, for those kind of reasons, but it is what it is. But I tell you, for, for me, being a guy from Cleveland with an eighth grade education, and I started out in nightclubs when I was 12 years old. You know, I started working for local sound companies. I spent the 80s uh, doing nothing but heavy metal and rock. I was in my own band for three years, touring the, uh, the, the East Coast, anywhere we can get the bus to. <laughs> you know, the planet that I lived on at the time, which was in between uh, Pennsylvania and Florida far west is Illinois. That was the whole world for me, uh, touring-wise, back then. And, you know, made my way up out of the nightclubs, into the theaters, into the big festivals, into the arenas. Finally made my way to Radio City and Madison Square Garden. And I will tell you this, I did not miss any step of the ladder <laughs> along the way. You know, I um, I did it all. I drove the, I drove the semis, I, I hang the audio system, I deal with the artists, I mix the show, I mix it on stage. And now, um, later in life, I'm, I'm all niched up and I do very, very specific things. And because I've done everything, it makes doing one thing make it seem like a magic trick because it comes very easy to me. You know, the one thing about being in the event business and jumping from gig to gig is I don't ask questions about who is performing. And the reason is because I don't care. I want to know the date. Where's the venue? Uh, what time do you want me there? What is my hotel information? And where's my flight? That's all I want to know. Who is it and what we're doing and how much stuff is going to be there and what it's all about? I care not. I will figure that out when I get there because I'm not involved in, uh, no one's asking me who I want to perform, so why should I care who is going to perform? You know, and I do a variety of events throughout the year that always don't fall into the straight up concert genre, and it's what it is. The thing that's important, it's not about the show, it's about the people that you work with. Just like everywhere else, it's about the workplace. I only work for one company, and the reason that is, is because it's the only company in the world that absolutely is dedicated to doing it right, every time. Company I work for, it's not about the budget, it's, it's, it's always about what is the best way to do it? Subsequently, <laughs> probably the most expensive company to hire, <laughs> you know, and that's what it is because we always do it the best way. And part of that is having the best guys, you know, and having the people around you, that's what really brings it together. And for me, it's nothing more special than having the respect and the admiration of my peers you know, and especially at a big gig like the VMAs, you know, the guys really got my back. Peter Walker, man, he's just, he's just the worst in shit. Oh my God, he's the freaking worst. Peter Walker is the worst. Peter Walker is the worst. Fuck <laughs> Peter Walker. <laughs> Peter Walker is the worst. Peter Walker is the worst. Peter Walker is the worst. Pete Walker is the worst. Pete Walker is the worst. The worst. Still the worst. Pete Walker is the worst. Peter who? Everybody loves working with me. We always have a lot of fun. <laughs> Pete Walker. Okay, so I put 
downstairs to go use the bathroom. You don't have to justify using the restroom. Yes, I mean, I have gone downstairs <laughs> while the band was on stage to take a shit because the DJ's cocaine was full of baby lives. So. This time it was... Listen, <laughs> I would have turned that monitor up. When you put too much baby lax in somebody's <laughs> cocaine, <laughs> we're going to have some problems. Yeah, we did. So then I went root and tooting down that bathroom, and I know I missed my cue. I well, let's just say the DJ was going to mix that night. For a couple of minutes. <laughs> okay, so you got down there, and then what happened? So I'm uh, finishing up at the urinal. Yep. And I washed my hands, and there was okay. a gentleman, or well, maybe not such a gentleman, standing at the urinal next to me. Okay. So tell I finished washing my, wash my hands. Tell us about his penis. I don't want to say yeah. it. <laughs> There's nothing really to tell you. Well, I wasn't staring at it. Huh? Just I did staring. not do the glance. Not a glance? Nope, I didn't do the glance. Not even. Yeah, not well, right. I was finishing up, he was getting there. Oh, okay. All right, I'll give you that. Don't worry, I would have looked if he was there with me. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> Go ahead. My hands, he gets in front of me, and he just starts walking up the stairs without washing his hands. So, yeah, that's close. And then I'm just behind him, coming up the back stairs, and I see him sit down at that first table that was at the top of the stairs, mm -hmm. and go right for the ketchup. So you're saying that he went from urine to ketchup? He went from his cock directly to the ketchup. Cock. Cock to ketchup. Cock. Cock to ketchup. It's right. kind of like, that's kind of like farm to table. Yeah. Ask, Ask the mouth. mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and, it was at, and it was at that point where I stopped touching condiments with my bare hands at uh, restaurants and either yeah. just went without or used a napkin to grab. Do you have a technique now where you're, you're napkin grabbing? Yeah. yeah. You know what? Maybe you should carry some Magnum condoms with you and then use them in the restaurant to sleeve them up. You've got to still take the top off, though. He's an actor. Peter Walker. I don't hate Pete Walker. I love Pete Walker. Peter Walker's the fucking best. You know, when a lot of people uh, ask me questions about the concert business and being in the concert business, event business, they, they mention a lot of studio stuff, like studio guys this and studio this. You know, guys that work in recording studios, I, I refer to them as indoor cats. <laughs> You know, and I'm more like a, uh, I'm more like a tiger out loose in the jungle. You know, I, I drag chain across the arena floor and we're lifting things up and we're stacking things and I pin things together and unpin things and a lot of moving parts. I deal with forklifts and one ton motors lifting, lifting weight up into the ceiling. You know, I mean, the guys that are uh, out in the truck, out in the recording environment, you know, they, they have no idea what I'm doing. And I really have no idea what they're doing. You know, I mean, I get some concept, but you know, it is not a um, it is not a switchable position. If you've been in the construction business before, you know, uh, then you're stagehand material. <laughs> you know, and as a matter of fact, I would encourage anybody anywhere you live that if you have construction experience, please go down to the, your local uh, International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees and see if they need some help in the local markets. Because everywhere I go, the stagehands I'm seeing desperately need some construction experience. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, we're showing up a lot of places around the country where it looks like they pick these guys up at the meth uh, clinic on the way over. It's what it is, you know. And back to people getting into this business for the wrong reasons, you know. If you want to get in the concert business and, and start being in production, you think you're going to hang out with the artists and have a good time and get high and drink and, and hang out with chicks. I mean, that is not what's going to be happening. <laughs> you know, you're pushing cases, loading trucks and doing the thing. Because you know why? Because that's the job. That's what it is. And we weed people out left and right because you think you could hack but after hour number 14 you know and I'm just standing there with my arms folded and I'm watching you fade uh, you know it's not the um, it's the moment where you realize man that this really is not for everybody you know the other thing about the TV TV uh, event production is that once we get set up we will sit on our ass for hours at a time, sometimes days at a time, until we hear that word, audio, and you gotta go out there and you gotta see what the problem is. We're gonna move the side pills, we're gonna move this, we're moving all of this. And you know what the answer is every time? Okay, you wanna move it all? That's great, let's move it all. Oh, we got a camera shot that's sweeping in this way and that speaker's in the way, but it's hanging from that. We got to move three other things before we do that and the lighting's in the way. We got to get the video guys involved and we need the carpenters here and the we have to some, and these guys can lay the carpet down. And that's got to move and that's got to wait. We're waiting for this. I mean, that, that's, 
That's what it's all about, man. We are tweaking and moving and thinking. We're waiting and then we're jumping and then we're waiting and then we're jumping. You know, it's... <laughs> It is, it, it is the roller coaster all the way through it. And even during the show, even during the show, it's a mad scramble to get the artist up there, check everybody out, make sure they're good to go, send them on out there. And then what do I do? I just sit in the chair. <laughs> the entire time the artist is out there, I'm just sitting in the folding chair, waiting for this to be over. <laughs> So we can switch it around again and get out there, get the new act out there, sound check them all over again, make sure everyone's got their ears and send them out there. Stage management said, we ready to go, ready to go. They're over at the other stage. And now we please welcome, and that's how we do it. This is the excitement of working the MTV Video Music Awards. Got Big Rich here. Everything's happening. Fuck. You know, on my Facebook page, I've had some people ask me straight up, you know, what is it exactly that I'm doing at these shows? And I'm going to tell you. I have two specialties that I do that I'm hired for, and they happen sequentially. The first thing is that I am an expert in hanging audio systems from arena ce ceilings. Rigging the system up in the air, installing the PA, what we call temporary installation. You know, if you want someone to install it into some arena that's going to live there for 10 years, do not call me. If it's going to be there for one day or a week, I'm your man. We're going to put this massive thing up there. We're going to get it to work. You know, we put the amps in the, we put the amplifiers up in the catwalk, up in the ceiling. We take the PA, assemble it, take the whole thing up. All the cables get pulled up in the air and all attaches up there. And then we cat five and fiber and get the signal up there um, to, you know, to, to drive the whole thing. And that's what the, that's what the, the PA, the PA techs are doing. I'm not involved in any of that. That is, that has gotten so high tech. <laughs> You know, we're, they're no, not, not longer, it's no longer running a couple mic cables and, you know, plugging in a, a left and right here. I mean, these guys, they tech this thing um, to another level where um, even though I've, I've been to the classes, I'm a certified L acoustics tech, I'm a certified this and that, I, I still don't feel that I, I'm qualified to speak on it on a level that my buddies are who are literally the pioneers in the industry <laughs> of how to do um, modern um, arena uh, audio for television. That being said, I physically hang it. I deal with the chain. I deal with the motors. I deal with the guys and the, the physically getting it up and putting it together. And most importantly, making it safe. My second skill set that comes in play is that I spend most of my career as a monitor mixer on stage with the artist. I control what it is that the artist is hearing. And here's the thing. With when you go to a rock concert, you see the artist on stage and you see him yelling at somebody, <laughs> they're yelling at the monitor mixer because <laughs> that's how it is, right? And the monitor mixer in a rock concert, country music concert, always, 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 100% of the time, has a direct line of sight, direct line of sight with the artist. So when the artist turns their head, they know every time that they are looking at their monitor guy and they're say whatever, do whatever. Sometimes we have these switches that they disengage the mic so the house can't hear it, but only the monitor guy hear it, you know. Whatever is the way of communicating, but direct line of sight is very important because when the artist is out there and they need something changed and they can't see the guy, they start to panic, they get to freak out, <laughs> stress comes in and it's what it is. And really the job is a lot of babysitting. It's all about, um, it's all about making them feel comfortable. I mean, not just acoustically, but in their air mixes. But you know, if they think you're some kind of nincompoop, <laughs> you know, or you're you're some cowering dude that just doesn't know what's going on, you know, they will eat you alive. You know, you it's absolutely an adult job. And in the television business, you know, when that TV camera swings around, you know what they don't want to see? They do not want to see a mixing console on the side of the stage. <laughs> not existent right so where do we put the mixing console oh, wherever <laughs> you know we put it <laughs> this last vmas the the monitor console for the stage i was on i was on the north stage with i had seven acts on my stage 
uh, the monitor console was 350 feet away. And I know that because that's how much snake I ran to get to the north, to get to the stage. You know, so he's, he's uh, the, the guy turning the knobs is all the way uh, behind some curtain. And he happens to be uh, one of the best in the world. My partner in crime, Chris Prinzovelli. He is always my driver. 100% of the time, and he is the best. He's the best Pro Tools guy, he's the best monitor guy. Like I say, he's good as get. Every stage has their own set of people. Every stage has their own mixers, their own their own consoles, their own set of guys, their own set of everything. It's a completely separate entity that's somehow bound together all for the same gig, right? So my gig is on stage is that I'm the lightning rod. <laughs> I'm the face to be yelled at by the artist. <laughs> you know, I am there with, uh, with my headset, talking to the artist what they need and talking directly to the monitor guy up there and tell him this is what they need. Turn this up, turn that down. And as he's doing it, he's doing it, he's saving it, he's doing it and saving it and doing it and saving it because that's what it's all about, saving it. Because television monitors is about three things, capturing information, saving information, and recalling information at the premium moment. <laughs> That's what it's all about. And certainly controlling the acoustical environment. Controlling the acoustical environment. I get uh, I get time during the week to what we call ring out the stage, where I take the vocal mic and I make it as loud as I can between the my stage, the center stage, and the far stage because I had one artist that went and used all three stages. So I wanted to make sure it was nice and even uh, as she walked across those walked across the stage. And when I do it, I make it about this loud. I make it so loud that the producer of the show is wondering why do we even have an audio system? <laughs> because I get it so crushing loud because I've been doing this my whole life. I know how to call the frequencies. I know how to turn this, turn this, I know how to get the balance. It's my job, right? And you know, I'm one of the best at it. So there it is. So I get the, I get it crushing loud up to here and then we turn it down about to here. <laughs> way, way, way down here. And when the artist wants me to turn it up later, I'll turn it up here. But we never, ever, ever get, never get to how loud it was when I sound checked, you know? And that's the, uh, that's the safety factor. And that's how we do it. Because feedback on a television show live is what they call a career killer. <laughs> You know, and I will say uh, without hesitation that I have never once in doing 25 years of live television events, I've never once had feedback on stage. I've never once had a fucked up set change. And that's probably why they keep having me back. But um, there, it's a it's a lot of it's a lot of um, it's a lot of peeking and freaking by everyone around you. And you got to be the one that stays level. The thing is about these gigs is that uh, this VMA, it's an epic show. I started on the 16th and it was I was done on the 1st, you know. Five semis of audio, quite uh, quite the bit of this and that. And the thing is that I don't take pictures really or uh, certainly before the gig and absolutely not during the gig because it's unprofessional, there's a lot of protocol. And the thing is too is that I'm really not that guy to be walking around the gig with my phone. Yo, what's up, this is your boy PDG. I mean, <laughs> That's not me. It's really not me at all. But on the loadout, nobody really cares. You know, there's no industry secrets being spilled on the loadout. Everyone's sensitive about the in because they don't want uh, any images out there. And during the show, backstage photos, you know, it's really not a thing to, to be going on unless it's just amongst the crew and we're just fucking around. Right, but I thought it'd be interesting if you ever wondered what it is like to hang out at an event concert loadout. I mean, really just hanging out with the guys. This is exactly what we're doing. This is exciting. This is where the real magic happens. <laughs> that piece of shit. Still quite a bit in the air. Oh my god. You got time. Somebody help her with that cable. 
Day two, PA coming in. One chain link at a time. Yes, yeah, hello, Lee coming in. Oh, just like that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Nathan, are you on? Are you still in your downstairs? Okay, what do you need there? Uh, in? Just like. Out? Okay. Uh, going up.
Let it bump up. Picking the whole thing up. Drop their favorite cigar, they're gonna want this after one. <laughs> it's a PA. It's gonna be fucking awesome. Everyone's excited, you're excited. And they're excited. Hope you enjoyed that, you know? Window into it. It is what it is, you know? It's not all exciting all the time. It's not all boring all the time. And again, it's all about the people you work with, man. You know, life is short, man. Enjoy the moments. Enjoy what you do. And no matter what you do, be the best at it. That's all I'm saying.